Hello everyone, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. I'm Phoenix Winter, this will be my first playthrough on YouTube of any game, and I'm excited because Phoenix Wright, I watched it as a kid, didn't play it, but I was really interested in it, so I guess let's just get started with it. First time on this, so go easy on me. <laughs> New game. Looks like we can play, uh, yep, three different games. Well, you know, first game, let's do it. <laughs> Episode 1, the first turnabout. Ugh, I remember, I remember seeing this. So I'm not going in completely blind on this, but I kind of know. Some gasping. Ah, yes. Oh. Why who? Can't get caught, not like this. Gotta find someone to pin this on. Oh, goodness. Like who? Uh oh. Don't make it look like he did it. Oh snap. It's August 3rd, 19... <laughs> 9.47am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh boy. <laughs> Phoenix is nervous. Also, yes, partial inspiration for my name here. Phoenix Wright, Phoenix Winter. You can guess, probably. And it's Mia, right. Oh, hi, Chief. She, she's glad she made it on time. She's impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about me. Your client as well. Gotcha. Thanks. Actually, it's because I own her favor. Yep. <laughs> Favorite. You knew the defendant before this case? Yes, I did. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. Oh, it's over. What? what? Hello? My life, everything, it's all over. Is it my client? I don't remember much. I don't remember the finer details, but I remember like the basic storyboard. Oh, death, despair. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna do it. He's gonna die. Oh, no. it sounds like he wants. To... Yeah. Wow. Great observation, there, Mia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Nick. Hey there. Larry? He's so guilty. Wait, no, I'm not telling them you're guilty. What? Hello? Yeah, what's wrong? It's all over. He's finished. Can't live in a world without her? Aww. <laughs> Who did this indeed? I'm not sure, man. Maybe the guy with the thing on his head. Yeah, the papers say it was you, but we're gonna prove that incorrect as defending him in this case, I think. Fairly simple one, right. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. <laughs> In 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. 
but I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Awesome. True friendship right there. It's August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, room number two. Lots of chat. Oh, hello. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Oh, I remember the making up voices for this stuff. The um, defense is ready, Your <laughs> Honor. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> the test will consist of a simple, of a few simple questions. I can't even read. I'm gonna fail. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Okay, let's we'll see. Larry. <laughs> ah. The stall for time answer. <laughs> Sorry about that. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Uh, did I? I don't remember her name. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the name either. Am I absolutely sure? No, I'm not. <laughs> Don't even know the victim's name? Uh-uh. Of course I know the victim's name! <laughs> Just forgot. Temporarily. She feels a migraine coming on, oh lord. The victim's name is listed in the court record. Okay, it's tutorial stuff. Just press the tab to check it at any time. Okay. Okay. Oh, my attorney badge. Cindy's autopsy report. Her name's Cindy. Okay, gotcha, Mia. I already checked it. Mia face, cinder block, Cindy stone. That's... That's the one. The victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? Oh, I know this. She dies because she was hit with a blunt object. We know that because we didn't check the record, we just kind of saw the scene. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you. I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. <laughs> well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? The answer on it? <laughs> I'm sorry, if I'm gonna give a voice, I'm probably just gonna do it. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather head. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. Evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. 
course. Use Tad to check the court record frequently. Yes, you told me this one. Oh, yeah, I can look at this stuff. Prosecutor, this case, lacks presence. He's really bad at getting his points across. Wow, easy mode for real. Uh, she was a model. Ah, uh, he probably thought he hit the jackpot then. A likable guy who's been my friend since grade school. And chief attorney at Fay and Co. My boss, and a very good defense attorney. Oh. Alright, cool. <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help you in your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Well, considering he has bad luck, apparently, that's a very poor choice of words, Mia. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. <laughs> this could be bad. There's Larry. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? <laughs> hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, Mark Anthony. Uh, didn't they all die? <laughs> I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Sorry about that. Alright. Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned over from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? What? I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Apparently arrived home from Paris on July 30th, the day before the murder. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. Oh god. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. <laughs> you can clearly see what kind of woman this Mrs. Stone was. Miss Stone. I can't read. Again, I'm sorry. Tell me, Mr. Buzz, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has no... Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? We're waiting to see what happens. We can't stop the defendant from... Yeah. Answering the question. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, no way! That's cheating. She... That cheating she dog. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I just want to... I'm just gonna drop dead. <laughs> Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> oh lord. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Yeah, this is so not looking good, but I don't think we should have intervened in a defendant's testimony. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. 
That's not a good way to put that. You're under oath, I think. Yep, he went. What do I do? Answer honestly. Tell the truth. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Whoa, that objection. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowit to the stand. Oh lord, that face. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay, here's the witness account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. I thought he must have... He must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend against a testimony like that. <laughs> Incidentally, why wasn't the phone the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. <laughs> Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. This some apartment was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? <laughs> you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? That witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. 
First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. Alright. The witness account. Alright, hang on. So, time of death was 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Loss of blood due to blood trauma. He said she was already dead. And then electricity went out at 6 p.m. from what well, was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Alright, so let's see. A man fleeing the apartment. Must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. The stranger went to the apartment. I saw her lying there while not moving. Dead. Hailed in fright and found himself unable to go inside. Thought to call the police immediately. But the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Cute. Hold it. Hold it. Phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean no. No, it wasn't. Right. Oh, hang on. Wrong was. Yes, I mean no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that. I can explain that. There was a cordless phone in the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried to using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Right, so... That's the easy one. <laughs> I went to a park nearby and found a public phone. No time exactly, it was 1 p.m. And Haran wasn't bad at that, but the fence right over there. Right, so let's present some evidence here. 1 p.m. The time of death of the victim was 4 to 5 p.m. Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Autopsy note the time of death was sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that's... Oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find it that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I... Uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Wait, wrong voice. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you had to do. Point out the contradictions. Yes, we're learning, everyone. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? On the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a videotape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Yeah, except there was no power to the dang apartment. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the 
time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. Yes. Evidence. I got this one. Alright, so right away, there's no power in the apartment. The TV can't work. Probably coming from television. Three hours off, wasn't it? So, watching a videotaped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. I'm terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Yeah, except. Go back. Watching a video tape program. Or, let's go to television, actually. Let's present the blackout record. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> You couldn't have heard a television or a video. God, I, well, Dirk. the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sewitt? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, wait, I remember now, Mr. Sewitt. Courts would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the beginning. The very beginning. Three constant corrections are harming your credibility. These. That, and you seem rather distraught. Oh, he's talking. That, and you seem rather distraught. Well, my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, uh, it must have been from the shock finding the body. Very well, Mr. Summit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Okay, hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Alright, so he says the clock was the murder weapon. It was a statue. That he murdered her with. Saw it. The table clock in the apartment. Maybe. Murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. So right away, we know the murder weapon is a statue. So let's present it. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? That's right, gosh darn it. Just answer the question, Mr. Sawin. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Um... Is it? Your Honor, if I may? Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it out. And it says the time out loud. It doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, I do. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in this witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. 
The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what is the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Do you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That, uh, I... I never... Look, I... The clock... I heard... No... I mean... I saw... I, oh... Hair. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it was him. I tell you, it, I saw him. He killed her and should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Claim the sound this her came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? No place is riding on this, but I think it's yeah. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Swift heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is simple clear if you simply examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbor to try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? 11.25 As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Talking about now. Though it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? You can't prove that. You don't have a case. That's right. How am I supposed to prove that? Dang it! I'm so close. Mr. Wright. Seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sowit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I feel. Wait, what? Did we mess up? There's nothing I can do about. Wait, what? Oh! 
Not so fast, Mr. Swift. Mia to the rescue? Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, Red. Don't throw this one away. <clears throat> Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the plot was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um... Well, yes. But that doesn't mean you still can't win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why is the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? <laughs> can you think of a reason to why the clock would be three hours slow? Of course I can. She was in Paris. And Paris is probably three hours behind her, but this is... Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock is running slow. Her passport returned from Paris the day before the murder. This, I guess, not a lot of people have seen it, so it must have been from Paris. Let's present it. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. there, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. He down, he out. What order? Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away in your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete an event so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Nay, nay. Awesome. We did it. Butts is safe. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, Larry went to her apartment and the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I wrote all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial I know such a satisfying, you know? I've never seen a Chief this happy.
She's in this cloud. Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. <laughs> Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Wait, no, what? Good, wait, no, I mean... Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Whitney's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Ah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headline now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat? Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. The murder clock? <laughs> present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You, you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that shit. And she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Wanna just cry? Larry. Are you so sure? Exqueeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Well, I'm not just thinking sympathizing, really. Is it that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Ah, uh, right, I do. Yeah, what is she talking about? I mean, I suppose the statue that she kept. Take Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Probably just need a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really? I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Ah, uh, chief. <sighs> so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then. That clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. 
I know what they're talking about. But that's the end of episode one. And I think a good place to end it for myself as well. So, before we head to episode two, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Nay, nay. Adios.